Hello, welcome to the Citrus Garden. If you're new here, my name is Christina. If you're not new here, hi, welcome back. It's great to see you. This is a reading for Aquarius, sun, moon, or rising. Doesn't matter if you have Aquarius in your chart somewhere or if you're just feeling drawn to this message for whatever reason, uh, there may be something in here for you. So Aquarius, <laughs> let's get started. I tried to do your reading yesterday. It was a bad day to do it. There was just so much going on. Um, a lot of chaotic energy yesterday but i i recorded the video anyway so i i did it last like late last night um it was not an alignment for sure because it, there was just so many things going wrong and and i kept trying to push through it um anyways that's part of your message because i feel like there there's something about like um maybe you have plans like you want you want to get something done you're trying to push forward with something, um, but it feels like it's like a struggle. Um, <laughs> and perhaps, perhaps it is a struggle because there are, uh, some things that are of course out of your control, but also it was coming through as being like, there are other factors that you are not taking into consideration that may affect um, your plans is how it's coming through. So I feel like there's something where, um, some factors that you haven't taken to taken into consideration are being sort of revealed to you now of like, okay, now I have to account for that. Now I have to account for this, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and that when you do that, it actually becomes, um, smoother or that an opportunity presents itself to you in order for you to move forward with those plans with the adjustments that have been made. Um, okay. So that's sort of the beginning message. Okay. There's this other thing that happened a couple of days ago where I just went to walk my dog at the park and, um, I had a conversation with a stranger, somebody that I've never seen before. Um, I don't think they live in my neighborhood either. Like, so I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know. I don't know this person. Um, and it was about a, like a five minute conversation about very mundane topics. Like we were talking about my dog and that person's dog. They, they didn't have their dog with them, but they were telling me about their dog. Um, and it was a very strange interaction because, um, everything that this person was saying, again, five minute mundane small talk conversation with a stranger, everything that they were saying felt like either a confirmation, a synchronicity or a trigger, which is really interesting. One of those three, cause they're, so anyways, the reason why it, stuck out to me is because I've only known one other person who, um, has that effect of like the way that they speak, the way that like, <laughs> I guess the way that they speak. Well, I don't know if it's necessarily tied to the way that they speak, but it just, anyways, it was just one of those like interactions that like stuck out to me, um, because of those three energies of like synchronicity, confirmation and triggers. Um, so anyways, I'm, I'm feeling that you're reading today based on like what I did, what the reading was coming through with yesterday. Um, is that your reading is about like the significant relationships and quote unquote soulmates, uh, that are in your life. Um, Anyways, uh, so I'm putting that in, in quotations because you can put whatever word you want to use there. Um, soulmates might not resonate, f resonate for you because um, soulmates can be anyone in your life that you have a strong relationship with. Um, because I feel like Aquarius, you are 
manifesting something. It feels like you're you're pulling something in. You have plans. You have a goal. You have something that you're working towards. You have some sort of dream that you want to fulfill. And it's like the image that was coming through for me is that you like imagine you at the center um, and everybody who's connected to you is sort of attached by like a thread or cord. And some relationships, of course, are much stronger than others, right? So the, the stronger relationships would have like a thicker cord, a thicker, stronger tie to you um, than sort of like surface level or like strangers and that kind of thing. Um, not only relationships, but also like situations, environment, your work, that kind of thing. Anything that sort of is part of your Ten of Pentacles, whatever that means to you. All those things are connected to you by an energetic cord. Some are stronger than others. And I feel like whatever it is that you're trying to pull in, whatever it is you're trying to manifest, Aquarius, um, it's at the same time pulling on you because you and whatever it is you're trying to manifest are also connected by an energetic cord. And so if you're trying to strengthen that tie or cord or manifestation, it starts pulling on you. And at the same time, I feel like it's also pulling on all of the things that are connected to you, like all your relationships. So how, why this is coming through is that I feel that like when this manifestation starts pulling on you, it pulls on you and everything that's connected to you. And so there, it is kind of feeling like Aquarius at this time, there is sort of like this energy of like, um, perhaps like tension within certain relationships, um, or whatever is like connected to you doesn't have to be just relationships. That's just the easiest way for me to explain it. Um, there could be tension within like, or like your relationship to work or your relationship to home or your relationship to stability, right? All of those concepts can also be included. That's going through sort of like, um, like a fine tuning. So how it was coming through as a metaphor is being like, um, like a guitar, like guitar strings, right? Like there has to be a certain amount of tension in order for the, the string to make the right sound, right? To be in tune with you. So it's kind of coming through as being like right now feels almost like a tuning, like it's like tuning all of the strings that are connected to you because you're making a shift into something new is how it's feeling. So whatever this new thing is, has tuned you, Aquarius, into like um, a new vibration or frequency. And so all of the things that are connected to you now have to also go through a fine tuning in order to match your frequency, if that makes sense, where like making sure all of the, the strings are in tune with you. So this could be relationships and things like that, right? The ones that are closest to you are obviously going to be the ones that are easier to tune because you know them well. You know just how much pressure you can put on that string in order for it to like um, be in alignment with you. And also knowing when to sort of put less pressure or put a little bit more slack in order to relieve some tension that, that could be present within a dynamic. Um, and so I do feel like there is a bit of like um, a recalibration of your relationships to others and to other things at the moment in order to figure out like what's going to be shifting with you into the next phase of your journey. Um, because I feel like there are things, because the image of the guitar strings, right? If you put too much pressure on something that perhaps is like too far away from the note that it's supposed to play, 
for example, the string is going to snap, right? So it feels kind of like there's like, there, there may be separation that's happening with energies where it's not striking a chord with you in, in your new energy or vibration. It's no longer striking a chord. It might be causing discord or disharmony. Um, there will be some relationships that you can sort of fine tune, either adding a bit more tension or releasing tension, putting more slack in the string, for example, in order for it to feel right or to like, um, sound right metaphorically. Um, but there are some that just will not be able to withstand the pressure or that like there'll be so much distance or slack put into that dynamic that it just ends up fading away. So there could be both of those things sort of happening. Um, but anyways, Aquarius, that's sort of a summary of like the message that was coming through yesterday. We're going to pull cards. I'm going to try and keep it like short, <laughs> but we'll see um, what happens. Okay. Aquarius. Yeah. Hollow bone teachability. That talks about being um, empty. Emptying yourself of expectations is how it's coming through. Um, it does talk about humility as well, that there is something for you to learn here. Okay. <laughs> the stranger card. Curiosity. The stranger curiosity. That's what that... Um, that story at the beginning of uh, this reading. Fine-tuning something. Um, okay, I'm going to pull the cards and then we'll talk about it. Spirit of the River. Adventure. Movement towards adventure. Okay. Okay, and the root girl disowns self. So there is something about um, insecurity that's coming through here. That term has a lot of um, baggage, so we're going to try and unpack that. <sighs> the term insecurity is kind of coming through as being like things where um, you f might feel like lack within yourself, right? With the root girl, the disowned self, like the aspects of yourself that you might s look at and be like, that's ugly or that's not good enough or that's like um something where perhaps it could also be like wounds because it is it is coming through with root chakra energy and that that chakra talks about um our sense of belonging uh our like our family the roots um culture is also part of it um, there's also like, like, so it, it's coming through very much with belonging and like the people that you're close to, that kind of thing. So there could be energies here where there's like, something about like your close relationships that might actually be causing sort of like, um, disharmony in a way that feels very uncomfortable because it's like these are your closest relationships and there's disharmony within them. And is there um, something that like maybe like like tuning so that you could release some pressure or tension or or if you need to increase it, I feel like it's more so like releasing though, like um, giving some slack is how I'm going to put it. And it feels like, so being perhaps generous with these relationships or um, putting, putting some perhaps emotional distance temporarily until this sort of shift and change can happen. Because I feel like, I feel like with the stranger card right in the middle, this is talking about, um, 
something other than yourself, right? Because if if the root chakra is sort of like your family, your close ones, your friends, all of that, the belonging energy, this is an energy that does not belong with the stranger that is different from the ones that are like you. And there, there may actually be sort of like whatever the stranger energy is doing. Um, I, well, that's the thing. I don't know if they're doing anything, but it feels kind of like, like it, to be cautious with my words, like, cause with that person that I interacted with in the park, there was no way that this person could know the things that I was insecure about, right? Like it's kind of coming through like that, unless sh unless they were a mystic as well, or like like somebody with like intuitive abilities. But literally, we ha it was five minutes. I don't know. Um, so where am I going with this? <laughs> it feels like there may be somebody who is maybe like there's a lot of synchronicity, there's a lot of confirmation, but there's also perhaps a triggering of insecurities that happens when you interact with this stranger energy. Um, but I feel like what it is doing, that whatever it is, because I think that people, like, in order to heal, you do have to address the triggers, right? You have to be triggered in order to heal. Um, sometimes though, it can have the effect of backfiring where you get triggered and then something happens where it actually reinforces the trigger rather than heals it. Um, so there's a, there's a, uh, <sighs> caution about that. I feel like whatever it is that this energy is doing with the stranger is actually trying to heal or, um, incorporate, create wholeness with this aspect of self, which feels like it is, um, that has been, I don't know, forgotten or neglected or outcast or, um, rejected. It is trying to heal that, but I feel like in order to do that, it requires that feeling of discomfort because it, it's also coming through as being like this stranger can see your insecurities and that's really uncomfortable. <laughs> um, but it's unfortunately part of the process of healing. Um, okay, I'm going to read the... Um, Hollow bone, teachability, humility, being empty so that the wind of spirit can breathe through you. The hollow wing bone of an eagle is a flute for the shamans. The appearance of the hollow bone invites you to become empty of your notions of who you are, to check your ego at the door, and to know that this is not about you. Relinquish your need to be right and to express an opinion, as this will not change anything right now. You're being called to practice humility. Hollow yourself out and hear the wind blow through you and play you like a flute. You will learn the language of the squall and the storm and understand the message in the summer breeze. There is an important communication waiting for you. Humility is the swiftest path for you to become like hollow bone. Drop all notions and titles that bolster your ego. Eliminate the doer and allow things to happen of their own accord. Remember that you can accomplish most anything if you are willing to let someone else take credit for it. Hollow Bone has come to caution you to believe only 50% of what others think and only 10% of what you think. Interesting. Trust your experience, not what you have read in sacred books or holy texts. This will allow you to turn apparent danger into opportunity. Remember that you are an insignificant grain of sand in the grand scheme of life and as important as the brightest sun. <sighs> K 
Okay, so with that metaphor of like you being sort of the center and all of these like chords and strings being attached to you, you are the sun in this case, right? The brightest sun. That's how important you are. At the same time, each person around you is also their own sun, right? So it's like there's a lot of like, um, it, it's kind of feeling like a push and pull energy between you and everything else in your life. Um, and this movement towards adventure talks about like um, releasing an addiction to trying to fix everything, trying to like solve everything. I feel like there's something about um, to just let go and to go with the flow of whatever is happening, to not try and force anything, to not try and push anything um, that does not want to be pushed at the moment. It, it really is feeling like, because Aquarius, you're the fixed earth or fixed air sign, right? Um, all of the fixed signs have a, like a rigidity and a quote unquote stubbornness to them. All of the fixed signs have that about, um, and I feel like for you, Aquarius, it is feeling like in terms of the mind, like your beliefs, what you believe to be possible, what you know, quote unquote, um, <laughs> because I feel like there's something here where um, what you know is being challenged. Yeah, Arvel the Parrot. Communication. That one talks about communication. I feel like it's um, asking you to listen. I feel like your um, methods of communication are being challenged. <sighs> That's a harsh way of putting it. I feel like it's more so that you're learning about different modes of communication that are not your strength. And so it may feel like a challenge is how it's coming through. <laughs> okay, you have the maiden coming out with the stranger. Interesting. Because that's a really um, positive card. You have Oh That Gnome and the Bright Mother. I'm not going to take these. But I... F okay, so that's interesting. <sighs> there may be a childlike energy about this stranger. There may also be an aspect of like your inner child that you're healing with the root girl. Um, an inner child aspect that you're healing that is very strange to you. The Oh That Gnome talks about um, letting loose <laughs> Aquarius. Um, letting go of sort of like the should and the have to and the must like that kind of thing letting go of like perhaps expectations that you have of yourself or others it does feel kind of like putting more slack into the dynamics that are around you like giving more slack um putting more grace in or giving more grace feels like um being more forgiving Okay, anyways. <laughs> the maiden signifies new beginnings and growth. You couldn't ask for a more auspicious card than this if you are beginning something new. Spontaneity, joy, growth, exhilaration, and promise for the future are signified here. 
We must note also that in the early stages of any process, there is vulnerability and a need for protection, shelter, and guidance, but there is also a magical impetus towards burgeoning growth. Trust the process, but take care of the details as well. The maiden is also the inner child who needs to be under the supervision of a competent inner adult in order for her to feel secure and loved. She is not happy when we spoil her. Consider what is growing in your life. Make a list of your hopes, dreams, and plans. Look for the growth within you and think about how you can cherish and nurture that. Bless the growth you see around you. Okay. Because the bright mother is coming out with the oh that gnome of with the maiden, right? Like there's a new beginning here that has something to do with a stranger, right? It could be... Um, it could be a, like lighting up your curiosity. <laughs> I feel like there's like a lot of um, synchronicity. There's a lot of synchronicity or like signs. I'm going to use that word that are showing you new things or new ways to communicate. This could also be like a new language or communication that's being given to you by by spirit by your guides by the universe whatever label you want to put there um there could be a lot of communication coming in different forms from significant soulmate connections that may or may or may not be at a distance to you but that are are trying to be strengthened there's something interesting here about like this aspect of you feels like requires protection and nurturing and growth, right? Because the bright mother is coming in as, as, um, is, it's interesting that the maiden energy, right? Like does, it does not like to be spoiled. Um, it needs things that are good for the health of it, right? So it's it's um perhaps maybe putting a bit more so that's the thing. That's where I feel like there's a bit of a a, a fine tuning process. Like some areas in your life need to be put more pressure on, right? There needs to be more pressure put on certain aspects of your life and there are others that need a bit more slack. And it's up to you to determine that balance for yourself. I feel like part of the, the thing that needs more pressure, which is interesting, is to allow more of this maiden energy to come through. The spontaneity and the joy. Um, the curiosity, right? The things that sort of light you up or to bring joy or to like... Um, that makes you feel like a fresh new baby. Like that's what's going through. That needs to be highlighted a bit more or like to be given more room to breathe, that kind of thing. Hmm. The Oak Man. Very interesting. That's coming out under the um, spirit of the river. And you have, yeah, undressing of a salad. This talks about balancing, trying to avoid extremes, trying to avoid things from being dropped, right? Because it is feeling like, like, like it, it's looking to me like a spider web. I know that's not the right sort of image, but just imagine like you at the center and all of these sort of webs connecting you and it's kind of like trying to find room to navigate within all of the connections that are around you all of the things that are holding you in place all of the things that are restricting you perhaps all of the places where you there is room to breathe or room to grow or room to like explore there's it's like there's a navigation energy coming through of like trying to figure out how to navigate the com the complexity of everything that's surrounding you and not 
drop the ball on the things that are really important to you. <sighs> okay. Okay, the oak men. This card depicts the strength and wisdom of age. It also reminds us that what we need to know, what is truly there to be seen, cannot be discovered by a superficial glance and hasty reaction. In a reading, the Oakman tells us to look slowly and deeply into the heart of the matter and to see past the superficialities of the surface. Consider the history of the situation in depth and learn from the past. Consult others with more experience than you have. Learn from the wisdom of the elders, both those available to you personally and those you encounter in books and elsewhere. In this matter, it would be wise to make your decisions after more pondering and study of the situation. Consider motivations in depth. Take action only after thorough deliberation. The Oakmen tell us that haste may be, at the moment, our worst enemy. They also suggest that we may, might learn a lot from trees. Consider the trees and their wisdom. Connect with the wise old one and ask for help. Okay. The second I didn't get a tarot card out. And I dropped cards. There's that energy of balance, right? Like, th like trying to not keep things from dropping or falling or um, maybe creating a mess somewhere. Um, Cause I was, I was getting a download before this reading of like a Jenga tower, right? Like those, that game where you, you stack the blocks up into a tower and then you slowly remove one block and put it on top. And there's a strategy about that, right? How do you remove certain aspects without breaking the tower, without creating a mess, right? There could be something about that, like trying to um, strategically move things around so that it doesn't cause more mess and that the stable, or the stable, the tower can remain stable. The structure, I should say, I feel like I shouldn't use the word tower in this case. How can you move things around to, um, to maintain the integrity of the structure? Because the thing about the Jenga, um, Right, because it's like there's like three, three things, right? One, two, three, three blocks, and order and like the most stable one I think is when there's two on either end and the middle thing is removed, right? Because I was kind of getting that there's an energy here where, like, with like the sort of plans being made, um, where that are like not working out or that there's like distractions or disruptions where like maybe there's an, like one thing that you really want to be sort of connected to at the moment, but that there may actually be a separation energy happening within that dynamic because both, both of like, let's say it's a connection, both you and the other are the, the most stable points holding up a structure, which is interesting. So there is this energy of like space or um, like in order to maintain the integrity of a structure, whatever that is for you, in order to keep a tower moment from happening, there is a separation between um, two very strong components. There's distance. There's, um, like slack being put into that connection. Um, 
in order to keep everything else from falling apart is how it's feeling to me. Hmm. Because otherwise there would be a tower moment. <sighs> okay. Yeah, Eight of Wands. Sudden clarity is what's coming through with that. Um, this is also like... So it could be, this also sometimes does talk about communication. I hard, I hardly ever get communication with Eight of Wands. It's more so like, sometimes feels like a bombardment of energy. In this case, it feels like this is when, like, I don't know, maybe you are having a conversation with a stranger and everything that they're saying feels like a lightning strike of insight into something right? Like it, cause it could, it could be something that it's like a confirmation can feel like this, right? A confirmation can feel like a lightning strike. A synchronicity can feel like a lightning strike. A trigger can also feel like a lightning strike. And that can be an area where, um, it's just something that's drawing your attention, right? That's how it's feeling like significant communication that is, um, connecting something for you whether or not that's something positive or something that needs healing right i'm saying that as being like it could be pain it, there could be un like discomfort about it <laughs> there could be discomfort about that energy as well but that's also part of the process Yeah, Two of Cups and Temperance. Ace of Swords. This Temperance card, um, this is a, this is a synchronistic energy as well. There may be an energy outside of you, like it could feel like spirit or the universe sort of like creating space for something, for like um, truth to come in. Creating space for truth to come in. That's what this um, hollow bone is, right? That's why the listening is so important. You have to create space for it. My dog saw a squirrel <laughs> in the backyard. Or there's someone who just came home. I don't know. Um, hmm. Creating space for the truth. Okay, and then you have justice and the nine of wands. There's a lot of positive energy here because I feel like with the ace of swords, this is bringing in this energy of that tension like in tune, in tune feels like there's something that is becoming like fine tuned or becoming in tune. Perhaps a two of cups relationship is um, becoming like finely tuned to the same frequency. But there may be discomfort in that because it may be putting pressure on certain aspects in your life or revealing areas where like there are things that need to be um, forgiven <laughs> or uh, things that need to be um, hmm
I feel like um, there's like an energy where the two, so it doesn't have to be with another person, right? It could be you and an aspect of yourself, like the, an inner child aspect. It could be you and a job opportunity. It could be you and some other thing, whatever it is that you're trying to manifest, but it doesn't have to be a relationship with a particular person. Just take it how it resonates. You and this other thing are being tuned together is how it's feeling so that it's harmonious because what I'm seeing here is that there's all of this like balancing energy that's happening and if there are any triggers those are being cleared and worked through if there are any like things that need to be adjusted or healed those are also being worked through at the moment it's like a lot of fine tuning is happening and I feel like there may also be areas where things are being let go if they are not resonating in that frequency. Yeah. Hierophant King of Swords. Look at look at this. Like the lightning and the key, right? The lightning is the key. That's coming through with Uranus energy. Like there's, we're in a Uranus retrograde right now. So that might be helping to um, clarify some things is how it's feeling to me. Uh, revealing truth. I feel like there's also something about like some sort of secret or like hidden information that is becoming clear or known or being shared or... Um, because the Hierophant also talks about like a teacher kind of energy, like teaching clarity, maybe. There's so much communication that's that's happening. The King of Swords as well can talk about like um, having to make sort of like uh, tough decisions, having to make tough decisions, having to like cut out energies that are, are not working, having to rework things, having to plan and strategize. Um, that might be sort of like things that, <laughs> well, it's like, so perhaps there's inspiration, right? Like getting sudden insight or getting clarity about something and then taking that insight clarity, understanding, and solidifying it in some way. Taking the lightning and wielding it, using it, manifesting with it, with the Ace of Swords and justice. There's like, this justice card actually talks about like choices and the consequences of that. Ace of Cups, and the Seven of Wands. <sighs> the Ace of Cups is coming out under the Temperance card like this, which I love. Because I, I feel like it's actually putting out some sort of fire in a way where... Because normally... F well, that's the thing. Because you have the Seven of Wands here next, right? This is coming out underneath the Ace of Swords. It's, it's putting out the temperance energy, this ace of cups, this unconditional love energy is putting out any fires that are not the truth. So anything that's not the truth is being sort of like washed away by the ace of cups. So this one stands, right? The seven of seven of wands. That's really interesting because the, the seven of wands um, talks about like um, having to defend one one's position, having to defend one's truth. But it feels like the defense in this case, what's what sort of like standing true 
is the fact that it has not been washed out. It hasn't been um, stamped out. It hasn't died out, that kind of thing. Um, in face of challenges, perhaps, or in face of, like... Um, challenge is just how it's going to, I'm going to phrase it. There has been a lot of um, resilience within this connection. You and whatever it is that you're manifesting, whatever it is that you're connected to, whatever it is that you're pulling in. Yeah. <laughs> Mother of Cups. Three of Cups and the Sun card. Ten of Cups and the Emperor. Well, there's the uh, the strength with the Emperor and the Oakman. The Sun. I, f I feel like you have six of swords at the bottom of the deck. Um, there may have been like criticism or uh, judgments from other people with the three of cups about this choice or this manifestation. I'm just going to leave it generally like that. If you um, are resonating with this message, you will know what that is for you. I'm just going to say like criticism or judgment or negative energy from a three of cups in regards to whatever this choice is, like perhaps not, not believing in the truth or integrity of whatever this choice is or, um, or whatever it is, right? It's like something where you had to defend your position to others. And I feel like... <laughs> I just heard the proof is in the pudding, right? Like the like something is being proven to be true um, through some sort of like resilience or strength or the fact that after all this time, the light has not dimmed. Okay, Aquarius, I'm going to leave it there. If this reading resonated with you, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for sharing your energy with me, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.